world has changed. America has changed. If something were to happen tomorrow... How self-sufficient would you be? Could you grow your own food? Could you sustain your own livestock? Could you survive? This is the We Grow Our Show with Nick and Don. Nick and Don talk about everything from politics to planting. They cover techniques, methods, and tips on how to not only survive, but thrive. Visit the website at WeGrowHours.com. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Get your grow on. Welcome to the We Grow Our Show. That's right. Dawn and Nick at it again. That's right. Episode nine. Nine. I gotta, I gotta keep track of these things. I'm getting confused. What episode are we at? Oh yeah. Cause we're so popular. We've done so much. <laughs> so Nick, you got to join the live chat on prepperbroadcasting.com this week. What did you think? I thought it was awesome. Good, good. Uh, we're hoping to get more people on there. We, we only had what, uh, eight, I think, ten maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Not all of them were active. So guys, prepperbroadcasting.com. Mondays at 8 p.m. Central Time. Come join us live chat. I talk to him. Yes, we build. We will be doing a live show in April as well, uh, separate from our podcast at uh, iTunes. We grow ours. Stitcher. We grow ours at We Grow Ours on Twitter and We Grow Ours dot com. Don't forget Facebook. Ah, Facebook dot com slash We Grow Ours. All right. So with that out of the way, we have a wonderful show today. Uh, we have one of my favorite people, one of my mentors. She is an amazing person with aquaponics. Uh, she sells the absolute best systems out there on the market. I own a company, as most of you know, called Ecopod Gardens. And we are a reseller as well as a designer of custom systems. Well, this person has the best kits on the market, Sylvia Bernstein. She's been around. She was uh, instrumental in bringing the Arrow Garden, which is what I got started with, to the market. The gateway drug, if you will. The gateway drug, the hydroponic <laughs> thing, and that ended up with me doing the whole thing and growing tomatoes in my kitchen, and you know the story. If you don't, episode one. <laughs> there you go. So we're going to have Sylvia on today. We're going to learn about a little bit about what the aquaponic industry is doing, um, about how she's been involved in the Aquaponic Association, the forums out there. She's a big part of this. I mean, she's probably one of the ones that kicked started aquaponics in general. Yeah, her and Murray Hellman to me are the kind of the two out there that are. It's the, the Godfathers. He's the yeah, the Godfathers. Um, she's she's would be a godmother. Godmother. Okay. <laughs> so Sylvia's going to join us today. Uh, last week was Nick and myself talking what, about stuff. Talking about stuff. Yeah, <laughs> just kind of our prepper, you know, ideals. What we do, kind of some of the stuff that we do on a daily basis, how much time it takes us, et cetera. So do you have any uh, follow-up from last week that you know of? No, but today uh, I I was asked about what preps I'm doing, and so I actually wrote a list of all of the all of the preps that I've involved in or have played with and see if I can pull it up here. Okay, so this is, this is, here it is. This is the list of things. Somebody asked me, so what are you doing and what do you study in order to prep? I said, all right, brace yourself, darling. Uh, That's what you said. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. It's in the, it's in the email here. It says, as for other skills I have developed and could demonstrate, here's the list. Number one, fuel production, cellulose, starch, and sugar fermentation for alcohol, electrolysis for solar, uh, electrolysis, Solar and electric for hydrogen production, solar powered steam generation, solar pyrolysis for hydrocarbon release, gasification for hydrocarbon release, water distillation and heat, biomass gathering and pelletizing of fuel stock, paper shreds, sawdust, wood chips, animal manure, hyperbolic mirrors for steam and or refrigeration, anaerobic digestion for methane production, used vegetable oil for diesel fuel, algae for oil and animal feed production, and then the next category was defense, dis- Defense strategies, uh, ammo reloading, lead and copper smelting for bullets, makeshift pneumatic weaponry such as golf ball cannons, weaponized nail guns, and my favorite, PVC pipe rocket launcher. Uh, impact explosives. And Nick does some amazing things with rockets. <laughs> He's got this fascination with shooting stuff very high in the air. Oh, yeah. Sky rockets in flight. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. And then back to the list. Gunpowder production from raw materials, how to make your own carbon, uh, harvest saltpeter from leach fields and sulfur. Rocket fuel from sugar, potassium nitrate, and corn syrup. Fertilizer slash fuel oil explosives. IEDs for booby traps. Obviously all illegal, but... Okay, I'm going to put our disclaimer in NSA. It's nick at hostelhorror.com. <laughs> oh, they're already on me. <laughs> the point is, there there's a lot of things you should know how to do, right. but not do. For example, I know that if you press uranium into certain <laughs> other metals with... with uh, <laughs> With C4, you could cause the next Hiroshima or Nagasaki. I'm not going to do that that because, yes, I have the knowledge. No, you should not pursue this knowledge and actions. And you heard the disclaimer at the end of last week's show. Okay, that should go right here. I'm going to edit it in. This is nothing you should try at home. Do not attempt. Do not do this. Do not even listen to Nick right now. Oh, come on. I'm on a high. What can I say? I'm thinking – I pounded two Monster Energy drinks before uh, I came here, so I'm freaking jacked. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Jesus. All right. He's going to take the rest of the show. This is Don. (laughs) Caffeine. I'm going to have fun editing this episode. Oh, God. I'm leaving it all in. We're just going straight on this. They want a live it. show. This is it, right? All right. This is this is what we're made of right here. And I'm going through the list of preps in my head that I do. I'm like, small livestock and I've chickens and aquaponics. I, I, I would, I'm supposed to have another male duck, but I still haven't gotten in it. Oh, yeah. just keep your... So... Bleep! <laughs> so, yeah, uh... I'm enjoying where we're going with uh, We Grow Ours. I want you guys to give us feedback. We want your feedback. We want to know what you want to know about. List. Uh, Nick just gave you a list that was – I'll let Don publish Five it. minutes long. I can put it in the show notes. Shoot it over to me. Yeah. Anything on there that you guys want to talk about with the exception of uranium, <laughs> I am happy to do. How to make a nuclear device. Yeah, we're not going to go there, but you want to talk solar uh, and, and not the solar that we already did, but solar and – you know, heating and cooking. We can have people yes. on that, that are experts in this too. If you're an expert in the industry and you want to discuss something, normally I don't like people inviting themselves on. But in this case, we grow ours.com slash ask us. If you've got a great product or a great idea, we're going to vet you. We're going to ask you all sorts of questions. But if you want to come on and share that experience and we think you can bring something to the table, we are absolutely willing to have you in our studio or on the air because this is important. We are here to get this stuff out to the community exactly. and to teach. Teach and reach. That is our goal. Control what you eat from seed to meat. Yep. Right? So we want to know how you guys are doing this. We want to know if what experts you turn to so we can get them on. We can learn from them. I want to increase my repertoire. So honestly, you can never know too much. Right. Uh, and to, to reiterate what Don's saying, we – if you've noticed, we don't really have any commercials. If you've got something good and you've got something that's helping people and yeah, it's going to cost money because that's kind of how it is. You have to have money in order to survive. Not everybody can donate everything that they do. Right. So yeah, we, we want to push that. We want to tell the public what you can do for them. Uh, and that's, if you ever feel like it's a commercial, know that that's not our goal. We're not trying to sell stuff to you. We're trying to give you avenues of do it yourself. As well as for those that are a little bit time deprived, uh, it's easier to trade money for somebody else's time and yeah, actually and buy a finished product. Remember, Nick and I sell a couple of different things. He sells yeah. rabbit cages and a fodder system. That's right. I sell aquaponic systems and black soldier fly kits. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're, you know, half of our shows aren't about that. So we're not trying to sell you on, we, we love our products. We're yeah. passionate about them, but we're passionate about other things out there. We want to have other people on. Uh, that, that want to teach. And I think we want the, t- the people who are teachers at heart. That's right. And on that note, I'll tell you, my rabbit cages are two foot by three foot by 15 inches tall. If you have a way to build that without spending a hundred bucks, that also includes a feeder, automatic water nipple, and some sort of a waste pan and a frame to hold it all together, then by all means, do it. You know, that'll save you some money. If you've got more time than money, do it yourself. I'll do what I can to help you. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure, Don, you, you've got kits that help people save a lot of time. Yeah, we, also, we've got like plumbing kits that you can yeah. get and you can go buy your own IBC systems. You can go get your own rock. You can do all the stuff and, you know, 
uh, call and ask for advice. I'm happy to help you out too. We are ours.com slash ask us. We'll give you the advice. That's free. I can't spend a ton of time doing it, but I'll do what I can. Yeah, we will make the cuts and put it together for you. (laughs) Right. I'll try to steer it. Well, actually, all the cuts are already made for the most part on this. You know, you, 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 you buy some PVC and yeah, you got to make a couple cuts and, and throw some glue on it. And that's as easy as it gets, but mm-hmm. we can give you these plans on how to do this stuff, you know, for the do it yourself right out there. So uh, we want to talk about, it's getting down to the wire here. April 5th and 6th mm-hmm. is the Homestead Conference. And you want to talk about selling something, guys. This is something you need to buy. Yes. It's $75 a ticket. Is that the I price think, on it? Right around there. We, we've gotten past the, the early bird special that was 75, I think it's coming up to 89. 89. Which, which is still, I mean, if you put all of these classes at 20 bucks a piece, you're looking at, what is that? Oh, how many classes do we eight. have now? Eight classes. Mm-hmm. So eight times 20 is 160 bucks. Right. You're getting it for half that. Absolutely. So homesteadconference.com. That's right. Go get your tickets because they might not be there for much longer. Exactly. Uh, we're actually doing a giveaway on Facebook right now too. Oh yeah, you can get free tickets by doing the. What, what does it take to do it? You it's, go like a couple of pages. Yep. You know our teachers. Mm-hmm. Um, go look at their pages. We've had a couple of them on Scott Yarish, um, Justin Roner. You know, you go out, you look at their pages, you hit the like button, you get entered to win some tickets. You look at EcoPod Gardens, you look at Hostel Hair, uh, all on Facebook, and you get entered to, to do some free tickets. Um, Check out our blog too. In fact, I just redesigned our website. Did you get to take a look at it? Yes, I did. It you looks like it? Pretty special. So I got the little banner up there of the little fish and the rabbit, the redneck <laughs> rabbit and the business bass. Um, you know, so go take a look at that at wegrowers.com. Check out the show notes and blog. We publish our show every Friday, but in, in the meantime, a lot of times we'll publish an article or two a week on there too. So go take a look at that. It might be something related to what's coming up next week. Uh, this week I'm going to put something on there about aquaponics. Last week, I don't know if you got, if, uh, if you guys went and saw, you're going to see Nick got a new logo and I know I'm spilling the beans on that, but I really like it. So I put that on the, the last show notes. It's awesome. I put a picture of the fodder system that we talked about. So, you know, go check that out. So Sylvia. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's get her on. All right. Okay, we're live with Sylvia Bernstein. Sylvia, you are the owner and proprietary proprietor of the Aquaponics Source. Uh, I know you were involved in the Aquaponics Association, too, and how that was born. So tell me a little bit about who you are and what you do. Oh, sure. Um, so as you said, I, I run the Aquaponics Source which is a company that sells, uh, boy, everything, full systems, components, parts, accessories, living things for aquaponic systems for home gardeners and schools is really our focus. Uh, we're not so much into commercial farming as much as we are people growing their own food on their own properties. Um, I also wrote the book, Aquaponic Gardening. One of my favorite now sold books. About, well, thank you. <laughs> it's sold about 50,000 copies now, which kind of blows my mind. We just had no idea how much this thing was going to sort of explode when we did it. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. And then I, I run the Aquaponic Gardening Community site, although I sure don't have a lot of time to spend there these days. It's not nearly as much as I'd like to. But uh, those, those are kind of the things that keep me busy. Very nice. So, Sylvia, you are um, selling aquaponic systems. In fact, Ecopod Gardens, which our listeners know I'm the owner of, is a reseller of your systems. I believe wholeheartedly in the systems that you sell. And your target audience is our listeners here today on the We Grow Ours podcast. So, uh, why did you choose to go and target the residential, maybe some small business, but that smaller systems from the patio, the even indoor gardens, which I'm really excited about your new products. But why did you target that <laughs> industry of that, that residential kind of backyard gardeners over the commercial where you can make, you know, run your own aquaponic systems and make uh, a good living just doing that? You know, I would say it's really – Twofold. One is my background. I came from a company called Aero Grow International. I was there 
for seven years. I was one of their first employees. And Arrow Grow developed the Arrow Garden Kitchen Garden, um, which your listeners may have heard of. It's a little kitchen countertop hydroponic garden. Um, and I was a part of their development. I was the VP of marketing and new product development. Um, and so home hydroponic systems were in my blood. And I, I know a lot about, about how to construct things that are pretty consumer friendly and sales based and, and all of that. So it was sort of a natural for my background. And the other reason is that I, when I first found out about aquaponics, it really got me all charged up. Um, I, I just couldn't believe how amazing it was that you could actually grow plants without soil and without chemical fertilizers. This was kind of a mind-blowing concept to me. So I got really excited about it, and I started going down the commercial farming path. I actually spent a summer really researching not only the markets in my local area for, for produce, but how I was going to do it, how I was going to set up a farm and run it. And, and through all of that, I really came to the personal realization that it's just not for me. <laughs> I'm not a farmer, and no knocks on farmers at all, thank God for all the farmers out there. But I just personally, that's just not in my genes. And so because I'm not of the the mindset to be a farmer, it just didn't make sense for me to get involved in selling products to farmers. Because frankly, I really think that when that it's a huge responsibility when you take on somebody's livelihood. And that's what happens when people are getting involved in commercial farming, commercial aquaponics. Right. So right. I, you know, if I wasn't going to walk the walk and talk the talk, I didn't want to really be responsible for that and be involved in that industry. So, uh, you know, I, I've been a, a backyard greenhouse hydroponic slash aquaponic gardener for, oh my gosh, going on 15 years now. So I have no problem walking that walk. <laughs> I just wasn't going to be a farmer. Yeah, I, I I understand that. I'm getting into the farming, and it is definitely uh, it, it's challenging. But I, I I'm a farmer at heart. I think because I find it rewarding. I know Nick here yeah. is from uh, uh, somewhere in the redneck country, and he loves farming too. <laughs> uh, but it's it's funny that you talk about the Arrow Garden. Now, do you remember what year that came out? Oh, I want to say in the 2005 2000. It's strange that we first launched the product. I, I joined the company in 2003, and we had several sort of uh, times when we thought we were going to launch, and then the product wasn't quite right, and we pulled it back. And I think we had two to three years of that before we actually came out with it. So right. that's not about right to you, about 2006. Yeah, I, I think I think it was around 2005, 2006, because that was my start into hydroponics was we saw this arrow garden found it fascinating my wife my wife got one and that's what got me started in hydroponics no was, kidding yeah i was buying all of these uh all the chemicals to go in it basically uh the nutrients and uh-huh. i kind of started designing my own systems growing in my kitchen and doing hydroponics i even started selling those to friends or family and then discovered aquaponics and I, I've been doing that, uh, well, probably about a year into it. So started around 2005, 2006 in hydro, uh, and then moved to aquaponics probably 2007. I, I remember discovering Murray. I, I know you know Murray and uh-huh. oh, yeah. that was huge for me and a huge way to get started is to, to, you know, find his stuff and stuff on the internet, which was, you know, just amazing, but there's just as much misinformation. As there is good information. So tell me about what you feel the aquaponics industry is, is how it's growing and also what is lacking still and what's been the biggest hurdles for it. Sure. Yeah, that's a really interesting question, actually. From what I see, you know, I'm willing to bet that what's happening with the aquaponics industry is probably what happens to any brand new industry. First off, 
lot of people that are uh, DIYers, and out of that comes a lot of garage and basement businesses. Uh, we certainly were one of those, how we got our start, and, and I'm betting you probably were too. Um, it's, it's, it's sort of, you know, you think about the, um, the computer industry, right? Right. And Hewlett, Hewlett Packard and Apple Computer and, you know, and all of that came from the Homebrew Computer Club. <laughs> all came from the garages. A bunch of nerds and, in their uh, mom's basements. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, that's, I, I think that's what's really happening with aquaponics. And you've got a lot of people that are very passionate about it. And they, we would all love to have our, our work be connected with our passion in life. And so there's a lot of people that are jumping into aquaponic businesses of one sort or another. Um, what I see mostly, I, I would sort of bifurcate into uh, probably two, two major categories. One is a lot of people starting farms. And the other is a lot of people starting uh, businesses where they do consulting slash building of systems, and they might even put them systems up on a website and be selling them. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's sort of a hanging a shingle as a consultant thing going on. Um, and there's, there's quite a bit of that. I'm seeing... Oh, a lot of influx and a lot of outflow, businesses failing here and there. And I think from that will come some uh, some few that will sort of survive and rise and really move the industry forward, have been moving the industry forward. Um, and there will be an awful lot of sort of noise out there as well, and, and that's kind of happening now. Yeah, I mean, you know, we are, I, I started Ecopod Gardens out of our backyard when we were in a homeowners association. I've moved out so I could have people come in and do the classes. So I'm right there. I'm a backyard person, hung a shingle out. Um, I think we do things a little bit different because I really believe in education. Mm -hmm. Education and aquaponics yeah. is the key in, in my opinion. So I won't just sell a system and I, I resell your systems. Um, so it's a great example. Beautiful, uh, by the way. Yeah, they're they're amazing systems, which is why we resell them. Yeah, well, them. thank you, and you guys are great resellers too. I wish all of our retailers could be as good as you guys are. Well, and and you've got that education part, and I think that's lacking in a lot of people. Go out and they say, okay, here's the kit, or you can put it together in your backyard, and you can put all these expandable beds on there, and they're not going to filter, and they're going to do all this fun stuff, and mm -hmm. you're going to grow four thousand pounds of food. And the consumer buys it, they get frustrated with it, and they then don't want to do aquaponics anymore. So I will not sell a kit to anyone. I refuse, whether it's any system I've ever seen. It won't go out the door unless there's some education there, unless we spend some time on designing and making sure they're choosing the proper kit and that their goals are based in reality of what aquaponics can do. So, Beautiful. you know, I, so I, John, you, you've hit on one of my major pet peeves right there. Mm -hmm. And that, that is just massively exaggerated claims that are being made. And it's, um, it's, it does everybody in the industry damage. Um, there are just, there are some certain rules of thumb and ratios that you need to follow in any aquaponic system, and you're going to get basically the same results. It's all about growing fish and plants together, and unless you're adding something else into the system, you know, most systems are going to see basically the same results. It's just... On that note, Sylvia, I had a question for you about adding other mm. things into the system. Now, you talked about yeah. ratios and whatnot, and I'm I'm kind of a not a math geek, but I, I have to see it on paper to know what I'm going to do. And mm -hmm. I have a question. Do you know how much or what the, the content is of the fish emotion and the, and the urea that the fish produce and how much quantity they're producing to go with that? Or is it just more of a, this many fish per this much filtration? 
boy, there's a lot of questions in there. So let <laughs> yeah, me see I... if I can remember them all. Yeah. First of all, fish emulsion is actually ground up dead fish. So oh. that's, that's not what we're using in these systems. My um, mistake. I think okay. you might be talking about the solid waste. Yeah. Well, they're, well let's, let's bring it down to grade school. They're pooping and peeing, right? <laughs> how, how much poop and pee are the fish can we plan on coming out of each fish? Do you have an idea? Or? You know what? There are, there are very exact formulas for that, which is kind of interesting. And, of course, it depends on the type of fish, the age of the fish, the size of the fish, and how much they're eating. Um, but there are mathematical formulations that have come out of the aquaculture industry where they can actually tell you if you feed this amount of feed to a mature fish, you're going to get X amount of waste out the other end. And a lot of these ratios that have been designed for both deep water culture and media-based systems, which, which are different because there's different levels of filtration in them, um, those those actually come out of the aquaculture industry. So one very interesting way of thinking about the fish in an aquaponic system is basically all they are is food processors. So they are taking that feed that is the input into your system and they are sending it through their digestive system and creating something that through the the bacterial microbial process can actually become a fertilizer for the plants. But, you know, in aquaponics, we can, we can dial nutrient levels up and down according to not only how much feed we give the fish, but the conditions that the fish are in. So one way to, if you've got a situation with aquaponic system where you've got too high uh, nutrient levels, your nitrates are going through the roof and you've got to actually dial it back, uh, at least here where we've got, we've got a real winter climate as opposed to you guys out there in Arizona, um, you, you just dial the heaters down and take the fish. If you're growing tilapia, you just take them down to 65 degrees. They'll stop eating and you just wait for the nutrient levels to go back down again. So you can actually dial that up and down, which I just find really interesting <laughs> personally. But, uh, yeah, so that's, that's I, I'm not sure I'm answering your entire question, though, because I remember there was a back end. And... Well, that's that was the first part was the, the ratios and what to plan on. But the, yeah. the reason I asked this question is I've I've considered taking fish out of the equation. And this is – Oh, sure. And this is where, you know, I bring my industry into it. I raise rabbits. And I would mm-hmm. like to find a way to use the rabbit urine in an aquaponic situation instead of having fish or with the addition of fish and just have larger filtration beds. But I don't want to just go hog wild and build a bunch of filtration beds planning on lots and lots of uh, ammonia going into the system and then end up having too much filtration and then starving out my system. So I want to find that happy medium and I don't know where to go with that. Yeah, and I, I'm afraid I can't be too much help to you there, except for <laughs> there's a difference in with the fish, what we're dealing with with the ammonia actually is not their urine. It, it mostly comes from their respiratory system. Uh, so it's not really a urea-based ammonia. Really? Urea that comes from a mammal is best uh, sort of compost fermented for a while before it's added into a system like an aquaponic system. Um, there's, yeah, there's some transformation that happens over a few days that makes it more ammonia-based as opposed to urea-based. And that's about the extent of my understanding of the chemical okay, process will... there. But I just, I would explore that a little bit. But you might need to age that urine before it goes into the system. One of the reasons why aquaponics works is because we're dealing with cold-blooded animals. And so because of the cold-blooded nature, their their ammonia-based waste is just immediately accessible to the bacteria. The same thing with the solid waste. You know, with, with a mammal, you have to actually compost that before you can really work with it because it's too hot. And in a cold-blooded animal, you don't have those issues. 
Um, and that's why you also don't have exposure to E. coli and salmonella as well. So the fish waste can just interact right there with the plant roots. You're giving us a chemistry lesson here. And I know that you also teach all of this stuff as part of your, yeah. your, your, uh, Colorado based company. So what kind of classes are you guys putting on and what are you doing, you know, with, with all of that? Tell, tell me about that too, where we can come and learn from the master herself. <laughs> Please. <laughs> we, we have a few kinds of classes. Our most popular, interestingly, is a full weekend long class that we teach called an immersion course. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because I thought our Saturday classes would be more popular, but people really want to get the whole enchilada in one weekend. So what we do with those is day one, Saturday, at our facility, we've got a 7,600-square-foot facility in Longmont, Colorado, and uh, we have a classroom there where we can take in people comfortably. And the first day, we'll have lecture in the morning that I do through lunch, and then in the uh, and it's all about hardware. We cover system location. We cover things like growing indoors and greenhouses, and then it's all about the hardware system design, grow beds, fish tanks, grow lighting. We spend a lot of time on grow lighting. Um, all those things so that you can actually put together your own system. And then in the afternoon, we do a hands-on session uh, with Robbie the plumber and Matt the aqua engineer. <laughs> these, these guys are quite characters. And uh, the afternoon, you actually build a uh, three-bed system um, as a class. So that's pretty fun. And then that night, we all go out to a brewery that's about two blocks away from us and have dinner as a group. Wait a minute. What's the name of the place? <laughs> it's called Oscar Blues. Oscar Blues. Okay. <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, you've probably seen Oscar Blues beer. Um, so that's, that's a good time because part, a big part of going to these classes is just people getting to know each other and, uh, you know, learning from other uh, people having the same experience. Right. So the next day is all about the, what, what I refer to as the software. So it's about the plants and the fish and the bacteria and about integrating those into the hardware that we developed the day before. So we go into cycling and pH and all that sort of stuff. And then the afternoon for the hands-on session, I run a session that's all about water testing and water chemistry, how to test it, how to read the tests. We actually test all the systems in our facility as a class. We analyze that, and then we do adjustments based on what we see. So it's very hands-on. The I take half the class, Joanne, we call Joanne the plant lady, takes the other half of the class and does um, plant work. So she talks about how to find insects and deal with insects, um, she does seeding, she does plant cuttings, all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a good class. People really seem to like it. Um, so that's our weekend long immersion class. We also have a one day fundamentals class where obviously we can't hit quite as much, but we certainly hit all the highlights and the hardware and software. And then in the afternoon we do, uh, a smaller version of the system build. Um, and then the other class that we just introduced recently, believe it or not, is in marijuana growing. I believe we, uh, it. Yeah, being in Colorado. To be it here in Colorado. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why not? And uh, I always tell people, you know, it's, it's not necessarily my cup of tea. I'm, I'm more a martini and wine kind of gal. But, you know, there's, there's, oh, now, who am I to judge? And it, it's a plant. Right, and it's a plant that grows very nicely in an aquaponic system, and it's it, people are are actually using marijuana for a variety of reasons, uh, including some really interesting medicinal applications. Yeah, you don't have to smoke it to to use it. I'm I mean I'm not a no. smoker of, of anything, but except for maybe my tires occasionally. But I. <laughs> 
my my theory has been I'm, I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist, but I'm pretty sure that marijuana has been illegal because it would directly put paper mills out of business for a while. Oh, oil too. I am a hundred percent with you. Yeah, because of the whole hemp thing. Yeah. yeah, you can grow you can grow hemp faster than you can harvest bark off of trees and have that come back as as paper. You can make paper pulp yep. out of hemp so fast, and it's rich in oils. There's just all kinds of stuff that uh, there's a lot of industries that will take a hit when hemp hits the market. Absolutely. And uh, yeah. I think, Sylvia, you and I had talked earlier about the fact that Colorado has brought in $2 million in tax revenue. And that's, that's in like a in month. One, in the, the first, the first month of recreational marijuana, which was January. Yeah, there were $18 million in sales bringing in $2 million in tax revenue, which is mostly going to schools. Here, which is ironic because you, you can't have a, a you know dispensary anywhere near a school. Right. Um, but you know, I just I just think it's great. Frankly, I'm I'm kind of proud of my state for being uh, willing to sort of take the plunge and be the leaders in this. Because you know, we we learned back in the 20s that prohibition just doesn't work. And yeah. the whole, you know, the whole throwing people in jail for smoking a joint thing is, is just tragic. It yeah. really has ruined a lot of lives. And it's it's cost a lot of money, too. Yeah, right? And and we're coming out of that now. And, and hopefully it's a little more enlightened when it comes to this kind of thing. So, you know, we've, we've taken a little bit of flack for, uh, for going in this direction and offering this course, but... We've also had a lot of response from people that have been very supportive. And the interesting thing is, looking at who's signing up for the class, I have to say without naming any names that I actually know three of the people that signed up for the class, and they're all women my age or older. (laughs) (laughs) Not a demographic that I was expecting. (laughs) But, uh, you know, it's just, uh, why not? Kind of thing. So. And marijuana grows good in aquaponics. I mean, I, I haven't done it yes. out here in Arizona, but I have actually helped a few people with the hydroponics setup um, when they right. had their, their, we call them green cards out here uh, to get set uh-huh. up with, with that based on the, the hydro stuff. But I, you know, I've never had any experience with it growing aquaponically. How is the, how are the results with it? You know, we've got a, a guy that works for us. Um, who is, uh, he's got his medical growing license and he took one of our space saver systems home with him, uh, and he planted his six plants. Everyone in Colorado is allowed to grow six plants. And gotcha. so we theory that given the, the footprint of the space saver grow bed, that it would be perfect for six plants. And so he's, he shows me pictures about once a week, and they're just gorgeous plants. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I mean, and it's all about growing the right kind of plant in the right kind of system, too. You do not want to grow a marijuana plant in a deep water culture or raft system. That's just plain silly. <laughs> <laughs> the only, you know, really, you want to use your raft beds for things that are sort of fast-growing, water-loving plants like lettuce and greens and basil and that kind of thing, right? Right. But anything that's a bigger, longer-term, nutrient-hogging kind of plant, you want to get that into a media bed. Well, and, and you know, you're going to get me started on the whole, you know, we get into that whole what you can grow in it, and you talk about 4,000 pounds of food, and um, I think that's a big part of the education that's lacking in this is people think you can take a media bed and grow anything you want in it. In reality, if you're doing a lot of juicing with kale or something, uh, it, it works wonderful and you can grow a lot of kale in it. You can grow basil in it. You can grow these things, but they're all the small root vegetables. And then you've got to really watch your filtering levels. Otherwise, your plants are going to start to sprout. They're going to get there and they're going to die. And I only know this from experience. Um, and uh-huh. I know you teach all of this. So, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I we're in here for the long ter- long haul, right? As I know you guys are too. And if you if you start making exaggerated claims, that catches up to you after a while and starts biting you in the butt. 
So you might as well be honest with people up front because they're going to be your customers for the next 10 years. And, you know, or however long they have their system and they're turning to you for advice and supplies and all of that. You've just got to be honest with people up front. And aquaponics is amazing enough on its own without having to just put out these crazy, exaggerated claims. Absolutely. I'm, I'm right there with you, Sylvia. Nick, do you have any other questions? Well, I've got a ton of questions. I'm just not sure what I should ask. I, I, yeah, I love the, I love the, the technology in it, mostly because it's very, very basic. Um, plants eat this. This is how you make this out of fish waste. And I mean, even though it's, it's simple ideas, it obviously takes some training to do it. Um, here's a question for you. I want to, uh, well, I'll just straight up say it. I, I actually have some red-eared slider water turtles that are in, mm. they're in a, they're in 600 gallons and they've got a biofilter on it and no, no plants in it that I've been raising for food. Um, uh, I did, I did do a swab on them and had it tested to see if there was, uh, any E. coli or salmonella, but where I took it from was just around, around their face and in some of the, some of the, um, soft areas on their shell. In between their shells. And I, I just tested it that way, but salmonella is pretty much 90% of water turtles are going to be carrying some of those, uh, diseases. Is uh-huh. there a way to raise turtles alongside of, of fish, maybe separated tanks, but same water supply so that you could feed the turtles scraps that are, you know, they're carnivorous. So they're going to be eating, um, they're going to be eating Meats and whatnot that you don't eat in the table. Um, uh-huh. Maybe some fish that I, I hear the I hear some distress in the tone of your voice. Me asking this question: <laughs> Is it is it possible? I'll just come out and say: Is no, it possible to raise turtles? Nick, because I just I can't really answer your question. I don't know. Okay. Um, I I advise my customers not to do that. Um, not to take amphibians and, and put them in with their food growing systems just for the very reason that you've outlined. Okay. Um, as out the salmonella. He's issue. heard this and answer from somebody else. He just didn't like it. <laughs> 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 if at first you don't try for an idea. Oh, you know. Um, I... Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, here, what you're asking, is there a way? Maybe. You know, it's worth exploring. It's, it's far be it for me to say no, no, never, never. Um, if, if you're somebody that's a casual hobbyist and you're not taking the kind of care that you obviously are with swabbing and having test samples done and all of that, um, from, from my worldview, the safest thing to do is just to say, yeah, you might not want to do that. Um, yeah, well, they've done studies that it can go right up in the tomatoes and everything now too. So you're you're, yeah. you're pulling this right up into your root systems, and you know it's the only thing I advise our clients not to grow in aquaponics is amphibians. You know, we say go for yeah, the, the freshwater shrimp. Fire. Turtles are turtles are reptiles yep. though, is or like, reptiles, whatever. And they're they're cold blooded creatures, like you're talking. I just don't know. Yeah, I uh, hope. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. <laughs> I don't know either. So, Sylvia, I know we've kept you on here for quite a while. So, why don't you tell us where we can, our listeners can get a hold of you? Uh, maybe your website, how they would find out more information about your classes, and what else you're offering. You bet. And with your listeners, if they want to buy our systems, they should go to EcoPod Garden. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. That's why we love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but our website is the Aquaponic Source. Dot com, uh, so P A G aquaponic singular source S O U R C E dot com, um, and then there's the community site, which I always like to encourage people to check out. That's at aquaponicscommunity dot com. It's about twelve thousand people in there that are all mm. interacting with each other and learning, and uh, it's just it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it's one of the best aquaponic resources that there is on the internet. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. There's there's some good ones out there, but we're just really blessed to have a lot of just great people. Um, so yeah, so that's how you can find us. And are your classes listed there as well? 
They are. So if you go into our website at the Aquaponics Source, we actually have our our business, our, our store site is the aquaponicsstore.com, where you can just get to it through a tab on the, the top of the main site there. Aquaponicsstore.com, there's a tab for um, education. I think it says educate yourself. And if you pull down there at the very top, it says courses and classes. And we just listed some classes for the summer. Um, and I, I think I'm okay saying this. There's going to be one more big discussion tonight, but I'm, I'm 90% sure we're going to be uh, having a festival this summer mm-hmm. um, that will be the weekend of August the 9th and 10th in Longmont. Um, and I think that's going to be really great. Um, I want to talk to you guys as vendors, having you out there as wholesalers. Um, but we're going to have lots of classes, hands-on workshops. Oscar Blues will be there. Um, <laughs> food trucks. It, it should really be a lot of fun. Oh, that sounds like a blast. I, I'm definitely down for a trip to Colorado. So <laughs> Awesome. Finally, finally going to meet you guys in person. Yeah. <laughs> I'll drag Nick along. We'll get him out there. So he'll have to bring some of his bunnies to teach people too. So there you go. There you go. Bring the bunnies and turtles. You you, <laughs> you, you teach him. You teach him how to feed him, and I'll teach him how to breed him. Okay. Great. <laughs> all right, Sylvia. Thank you so much for spending your uh, time with us. I'm going to put all of the links to your website and the classes and everything up on our show notes on our website at wegrowers.com. And I will go ahead and get you a link over there too, so you can uh, hear, hear the uh, the podcast, which should be out on Friday. Beautiful. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Appreciate the opportunity. Man, that was awesome. What a what a cool interview. Uh, it's nice having that much knowledge on the phone, you know. Oh yeah, I mean, she's been doing this for a long time. I've learned a lot from her. If you guys come to to our class. Our classes um, at the Homestead Conference or mm-hmm. Ecopod Gardens, you'll find out I use I, I kind of stole her technique because I'm a IT guy. Mm-hmm. So that hardware software thing that she talks about, it's right up my alley. Nice and yeah, so that's kind of one of the outlines that I use. Um, dirty, dirty teeth. I love the fact that she's doing the marijuana. I know it's a, it's a subject that not everybody agrees with. However, the fact that she's out there teaching and getting people involved, if you know how to grow marijuana, you're going to know how to grow food if things happen. Mm-hmm. And and heck, if you know how to grow that and things do happen, you've got a hell of a barter tool. Yeah. I, I think that uh, – all right. So I, I've gone over this before. Prescription drugs. Uh, there's a lot Bad. of – there's a lot of stuff out there that sounds like half of the uh, side effects of the drug are worse than the symptom that the drug treats. And yeah, the 30 second commercial with five seconds of a guy sitting in a bathtub and the rest of it is like, you know, yeah. oh, by the way, you may die of a heart attack. You may end up with liver disease. You may end up keeling over for no apparent reason other than you're taking our medicine. My, my favorite is the, the weight loss drug. I forget what it, what it is, but it says may cause anal seepage. Uh, no, no, I'm not, uh, no, <laughs> no, thank you. That's yeah. not even, as, as, uh, Bill, what is it? Jeff Foxworthy says, that ain't even fun to say. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah, Sylvia, thank you so much for giving us your time. You guys go check out her website. It's going to be on our show notes. She is doing not just classes on how to grow marijuana, but she does amazing mm-hmm. weekend immersion classes. That's going to be cool. Um, I'm, I, I can't wait to learn more about her. What is that? August? She said, yeah. Oh, this, is it a, a festival? A festival. I, I should ask a little bit more. I, I imagine she'll have it on her site. So we'll. We'll, uh, well, I don't think it's quite ready to be announced yet. Oh, that's right. Yeah. She's kind of hush hush. Yeah. Well, she's supposed to. So I'll find out more the about inside that. Scoop fillers. Yeah. We, we air on Fridays and yeah, on maybe. Mondays on yeah. Prepper Broadcasting. So it might be up by then. Mm-hmm. It will go on our show notes. It will go up as soon as I know it. If not this week, next week, whenever I find out. Um, so she does amazing stuff. I do a lot of systems to schools. If you guys have any schools out there that you know of that need to get into aquaponics, it's easiest with private schools, just an FYI. Um, it's hard to get into these government run schools and try yeah. to teach something alternative. But yeah, why would you want to do that anyways? Yeah, we're doing a lot with schools. So if you guys have any interest in that, let me know. We do that as close to nonprofit as we can, uh, without 
going completely broke. So I try to offer some really good deals to schools. Uh, we just did another one down in Pennsylvania. Really excited about that. So yeah, what else? Oh, plug of the week. Plug of the week. Yeah. Are you ready? I've got one this week. All right. Let's hear it. All right. So this is going to sound selfish. Oh no. Are you but plugging yourself reason. again? No. <laughs> <laughs> Edit here. Edit here. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so. If you're in the Phoenix, Arizona area, and we do a lot of these in Phoenix, but anywhere across the nation for that matter, but this one in particular is Phoenix. There's an IT company out there that does small business IT services, CMIT Solutions. CMIT Solutions. Yes. Now, CMIT Solutions of the Northeast Valley, if you're a small business owner looking for an actual team member to help you with IT, that would be me. It happens to be my daytime job. The reason that I'm plugging my own company is because they're awesome. I love working for them and I would not be able to do this podcast if my boss wasn't as good as he is. I take really good care of my clients when it comes to IT. I mean really good care. They are my clients. I'm the tech. I love to go out. I I do anything they can. Uh, My boss is amazing. He gives me the freedom to go do that. He gives me the freedom and the support to go teach others because he knows I have a passion for it. So CMIT Solutions of the Northeast Valley, check them out if you're in Phoenix. If you're not, I am been working with this company for a long time. I've watched it grow. And if you're looking for a small business IT support company anywhere across the nation, as I said, we're a franchise, phenomenal company. I wouldn't want to work anywhere else when it comes to IT, CMIT Solutions, and you can find them at cmitsolutions.com. So I'm going to plug my own company that I work for because I have the best boss ever. Now, I I, I feel almost obligated to mention mine, but I yeah, repair don't. copy machines. So uh, <laughs> if you need your copy machine repaired, don't call me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not joking. My cell phone and my business line, as soon as I hear copy machine, there's something wrong with the phone. It just It just shuts off. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I I love doing what I do. We've got a great team. And I've all... met Bruce. Bruce is an awesome dude. He's not even but, a prepper, is he? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, he goes to the grocery store once a week and loads up. I mean, you know. That's about right. Yeah, but he supports what we're doing because he knows we're passionate about it. So. Oh, speaking of uh speaking of the time zone change. Yes. Uh there was this post that I saw this morning that that uh it had a picture of a a Native American, and uh, the, the post says that upon hearing the description of why daylight savings time came to be, the the Native American said, only a government would come up with the idea of cutting off one foot of a blanket and adding it to the other end of the blanket and thinking they gained something. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> what, a, what an awesome uh, way to interpret that. That's one of the many reasons why I enjoy Arizona. I don't yeah. have to touch my clock. When I was going to say, we're in Arizona, so we don't do nothing. Yeah. So it just it's a lot easier that we way. We don't want to save daylight. We get enough of that sunshine crap. We got the plug of the week out of the way. I think that's it. We want to say thank you to Prepper Broadcasting once again. Yeah, that was an awesome chat session. You gonna cry about it? <laughs> oh, what's going on here? My throat just shut down. My eyes started watering. Oh, you got all emotional. It's just so happy to be here. <laughs> all my listeners out there are loyal fans. I'm not gonna read the list again. Last time it was called bragging. Bragging? Yeah. Cause I read our list of, you know, different countries besides uh, states and countries. I never mind. Know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe if you attended the chat more often. I'm sorry. I was I. I know he had a date listen, night with his wife. Listen, damage control on the the home life takes precedence over anything else. So I do feel sorry that you don't feel special enough to to uh, be Trump to to trump my marital situation. <laughs> but Nick has an amazing wife that's very supportive. So yes, she is awesome. She's actually. I don't know if I said this or not, but when I first came to grips with the fact that we weren't very prepared, I went to my wife and I said, uh, honey, I, I think we need to get some, some food st- or I actually, I said, you know, we need to be a little bit more prepared for if, you know, a rainy day. And uh, little did I know that rabbit hole would turn into rabbits, but, um, I, uh, I told her that and she goes, yeah, let's buy a 40 foot con X box, spray it with bed liner and bury it in the backyard. And I'm nice. like, are you serious? She's like, uh huh. I want to try that with an aquaponics system. What? Put it underground? Yeah. In a, in a, in a big conics box. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, put the lights in there. Have a nice little grow room. For- the point is, what other girl 
is going to oh, fire know. that off. I mean, she's great. We talked about raising our house up and putting one under it. <laughs> yeah. Because we have a manufacturer well, yeah, home. Yeah, the manufacturer home, you can do that. Yeah. Just In fact, home. there's home. a company. We need to figure out who it is. But there's a company that um, that uh, is very – not incognito, but yeah, they're incognito. Like they'll – They'll take all their tools into your garage, mm-hmm. dig a hole. Garage. Well, if you had one, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, you've got that one. Oh, that I do pad have a over garage. There. Yeah. yeah. So basically, they go in, they close the door, they dig a hole, they go down, and they build the bunker from inside the garage and out. So you never see any heavy equipment. Well, that'd be like great that. for like an HOA type situation. Exactly. Where all your neighbors are watching what you're doing. Exactly. When yeah. when uh, negative Nancy across the street's got her binoculars out to see what's going on and telling the HOA when you've got two inch high grass when you're supposed to have an inch and a half That's high right. grass. Right out there with the little ruler. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I love those. But yeah, you, you could be very incognito, put a whole functioning, uh, cellar and, and basically a, a, a fallout shelter underneath of your house. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I, I think they're like 40 grand expensive. for a, for a starter. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you're, if you're in a situation where you need a bomb shelter. Then 40 grand is well spent. Exactly. Yeah. 40 grand doesn't sound like a bad investment when you hear. Yeah, I, I still have that philosophy. I think if I hear that, I'm going to run outside and hope it lands really close. <laughs> try, <laughs> try and catch the damn thing. There, there's a few <laughs> things that I don't know if we really want to survive through in a nuclear warhead yeah. going off. All over, you know, or many of them oh, is gosh. just one that I don't know that regardless I'd want to just deal with. I think I'm, I'm pretty at peace with me meeting my, my maker at that point. <laughs> As my and, marketer says, Oh man, I'm just going to go meet Jesus. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just call it good. Just time to go at that, at that point. Uh, uh, zombies, I think there'd be, you know, I can deal, deal with that. I could at least, that's the thing is it would be a, at least there'd be something to shoot. Yeah. That, you know, I, there's an enemy present that you could shoot and hopefully outsmart. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Still not prepare for it. I don't want to live in a bunker forever. No, no. That's, we talk about not only surviving, but thriving. thriving. Yep. At one point, at a, at some point, you're going to run out of stuff. Yeah. And would you rather starve to death or die on a pile of brass? You know, that's, oh, I, mean, I hear you. That's, yeah. that's the way I see it is like, all right. You might have won, but it's going to cost you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking a lot of you down with me. <laughs> so again, for the Homeland Security and NSA, and Nick at HostileHair.com. <laughs> Don has nothing to do with this. I do not suggest doing any of this stuff. If my email ends gonna... up in the show notes, I'm going to smack you. <laughs> well, I've said it enough times. I mean, you know, and it's a great place to buy rabbit cages or rabbit meat systems, livestock, live food storage Live systems. food storage systems. That's right. That's yeah. what we do. And we talked about you're going to do a little bit more with some um, – actually, I think I'm going to do a little bit more with Black Soldier Flies too. Yes. We're, so we're we're working on that project, see how that comes out. There's going to be some – hopefully we should have something to report within the next couple of months. Now that the temperature is starting to rise up, we can, we can play with those. Cool. I, I'm going to be doing uh, – I've actually got a friend that brews his own beer and I'm going to try and steal how some of I? his uh, – some barley. of his beer barley. Yeah. yeah. Um, fermented and then mix that with the rabbit. Waste. Exactly. Yeah. See what kind of a, a concoction we can come up with because it's mm, yummy. Oh yeah. Well, I don't drink beer, <laughs> but I've smelled what those things smell like when they're done, like before it goes into ferment. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Hey. We're going to see what kind of concoctions we come up with and, and get that going. We've got some other cool things. We've got hopefully in August. I think we're still going to do this. Haven't gotten a lot of feedback on it yet, but the Jackalope Freedom Fest, I'm going to try and drag Nick out. I know my wife and kids want to go camping, so we're going to try and do it that weekend. Go see what this is all about. What weekend is that? Do you I, remember? I don't remember. It was is on it like the, the 15th ish. It's in August. Um, <laughs> I will go. I will let you know. It's called Jack Fest three. Huh. Don't it's Google a Jackalope that, kids. Freedom Festival <laughs> three. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying, don't Google it. <laughs> Not from personal experience, but you know, there's the it possibility. Is, let me see if I can say this right. Agorist market. Ag. Uh, how do you pronounce that word? Ag- I don't know what you're trying to say. All right, there's no cash. Oh, it's all about goods and services and bartering. Oh, I think they call it the Luna system. Okay, so. We're going to still try and get out there. We've got the Prepper Fest Nick is going to be at on in March. Yep, March 21st through the 23rd. So that's going to be at the Arizona State Fairgrounds. If anybody's ever been interested in prepping, 
live food storage, homesteading, canned foods, even if you're not a prepper, come down there. They're doing a lot of classes Mm -hmm. and I don't know who's teaching aquaponics. Um, obviously they're not me uh, this time. I've, I've done it down there. Don't come for the aquaponics because they're going to know crap. Yeah. I'll, I'll, (laughs) you come over, we'll do that. So I think the following weekend, March 29th, I'm actually going to do a, an aquaponics, very small class. So if you're interested in that, get a hold of me at dcupper at ecopotgardens.com. Let me know if you want to come to our March 29th class. You can also see that at the wegrowers.com events and take a look there. We're going to do a dedication for um, some people that we put a system in for, and we're going to do our fish introduction into the system after it's been cycled. This is an absolutely amazing custom system up near where I live in Desert Hills. So you guys are welcome to come see that, stay for an hour or so, plant some plants, you know, just kind of enjoy the day. Um, Nick, are you doing, where else are you going to be? Well, the homesteading conference is pretty much what I've been focusing on. There is a prepper event up in Prescott. Oh, that's right. In April. And I'm sorry, Mr. Baker, I cannot remember what date it is. So we'll, we'll find we'll that find out that, too. put that in the call notes. If not, we'll put it up for next. And if nobody's been up there recently, there oh, is a new store up there. Yeah. And it is like the playground for backyard farmers. It is – um Oh, shoppers. Or no, no, no. Um, uh, tractor supply. Tractor supply. That's the they one. They open the store up up there. And so. they sell hardware by the pound. Yeah. I mean, this place that is. That sounds really retarded that I'm all excited about that. But oh, I, we have them it, back east and there's it, no exactly. tractor supplies and they open it. We actually drive up once a month now to go to tractor supply. Really? Yeah. Well, we get our food up there. <laughs> well, it's an excuse, I guess. Yeah. But we, we do get it's amazing deals impressed. on yeah. our chicken food up there. Mm-hmm. We get some stuff for our goats that they don't have down here that we have to order. So we go up there. It's beautiful. Lynx Lake is right like, around the what, corner. 45 minutes yeah, from it's there? an hour and 15 max. Okay. And there's a nice little gold panning place that we go mm-hmm. and just, you know, try to make a day out of it and go up there. So, um, tractor supply is awesome. And if you're going to go to the prepper fest up there from Phoenix or a surrounding area, stop by the tractor supply. Definitely. Too. It's a, playground it's like a kids are us oh oh yeah toys are, us. toys are us for big kids yeah yeah i i love it like go in there in fact uh what i love to do is i go in and i take pictures of the of the prices on rabbit cages and stuff and send nice. and send them to send them to the facebook and show it off it's like yeah 30 bucks gets you nothing that's right <laughs> it's like 30 bucks for a water and a feeder but yeah that that being said they've got a lot of a lot of other good stuff there's actually some literature there uh, on raising different animals and and toys like like redneck farm toys. Oh that, yeah, there's that you neat. can't find them in the valley right. because nobody has farms. And yeah, there's one other shop that's pretty decent down in uh, in the West Valley. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but so I guess we got two plugs of the week this week. Yeah, tractor supply, huh? Tractor supply and IT specialists. Yeah, CMIT solutions. There you go. All right, well, thank you for joining us once again. I'm going to go through the list. We grow ours dot com. Uh, at we grow ours on Twitter, facebook.com slash we grow ours and join us on prepperbroadcasting.com Mondays at 8 p.m. Central. Central. I believe. Go to prepperbroadcasting.com and it's on there. Uh, that is when we do a rebroadcast of our show, which you can catch on iTunes and Stitcher, or you can wait Mondays, listen live and do the chat along with Nick and or myself on most weeks. So thank you. See ya. Nick, you, yours is long enough. I, your repertoire. Yeah. Awkward silence? Let's follow that one up. The, the, awesome. Awesome. All right. You oh, already, man. uh. Oh, we got a little personal there, Donnie boy. Yeah, I would never say that to you. <laughs> Don't worry. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the disclaimer. That's right, the disclaimer. This American Apple Pie Institution known as parental discretion will cleanse any sense of innuendo or sarcasm from the lyrics that might actually make you think and will also insult your intelligence at the same time. So, protect your family. This show contains explicit depictions of things which are real. These real things are commonly known as life. So if it sounds sarcastic, don't take it seriously. If it sounds dangerous, do not try this at home or at all. And if it offends you, just don't listen to it.